Misty Krause here. And the book today is Margaret Atwood's Arcs and Creek. Now, Margaret Atwood is like Shirley Jackson. You know, uh, you, you mention either name and everybody goes, oh yes, uh, we know who that is. Shirley Jackson, she wrote that, uh, that lottery story, which is about those bucolic folks. Uh, performing murderous rites for some long-forgotten paganish reason. And yes, Margaret Atwood, Handmaid's Tale. We've just seen the series on Hulu. You know, that whole white patriarchy, oppression, repression of women thing. Um, we're all well-read, we all got it, we're all with it, and really, that's all we need to know about Margaret Atwood and Shirley Jackson and all that. Well, at least that was kind of my attitude. You know, um, that's who she was, fine dandy, read the book, got the t-shirt, done. Well, one day I was perusing a list of uh, highly recommended fantasy and sci-fi titles because, let's face it, these days the only way you can keep out is checking out uh, lists like that. And I saw Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Craig. I said, oh yeah, yeah, her, The Handmaid's Tale. Yes, I read that. It was good. Although, uh, you know, I'm getting a little bit tired of all this recent thematic uh, political correctness that seems to be into everything. And, you know, but that's fine. Uh, this being at wood, it probably would be that, but it's on the list, so give it a read. And yes, indeed, there was plenty of thematic political correctness in it, but gotta say, wow, uh, quite a book. Oryx and Crake is the first book of the Mad Adam trilogy. It's set in the near future. It's a tale of uh, man-made catastrophe and cataclysm as related by Snowman, uh, who was Jimmy before the cataclysm. His pal Crake, uh, who actually causes the cataclysm, uh, leaves him in charge of a bunch of genetically neutered quasi-humans who uh, will inherit the Earth and, uh, and all of whom call Jimmy Snowman, which is why you have the name change. Uh, Oryx is the girl that they both love. Uh, she is a prepubescent sex slave that Jimmy saw, once saw in the frame of an Asian child porn movie when he was about 12 years old. Or maybe he didn't. He's not really sure, and you're not really sure. But re but somehow, Oryx makes her way from Asia to uh, Crake's Corporation and becomes his gal Friday, with benefits. But she also loves Jimmy, and Crake doesn't know that, but then maybe he does know that and doesn't really care. Anyways, Oryx becomes the first teacher of the quasi-humans until Jimmy, Snowman, takes over. So... Got it? Yeah, that's pretty much how it is. Now, don't think this is so confusing that there's no way to make hide nor hair of this, because Atwood keeps all the lines straight. That, yes, yes, there's a lot of flashbacks without warning, which, uh, you know, is the, the sign of writerly sophistication these days. But the name, change, name changes keep you in whatever time frame has, has just been entered. Uh, and there's no exposition, thank God, but plenty of references from which you can deduce uh, all the events and everything that's going on in the current world. Now, for example, wait until you encounter the Pagoons. You'll figure out pretty quick what they are. And yes, plenty of thematic political correctness. In this case, uh, the evil corporations callously exploiting the great unwashed for their god profit. Uh, but not really. Uh, this is more of a tale of eugenics, uh, which, you know, is, is a political ideology pretty much on the, on the far left side of things. You know, all those crazy people who want to turn us into a sort of green and uh, then send the survivors to re-education camps. I don't know if that's what Atwood intended, because she seems to be fashionably anti-capitalist. But maybe she can recognize uh, craziness on either side of the political spectrum. So read it, and the next time someone mentions Margaret Atwood, you'll have a fallback title. D. Krause here. See you next time. Bye.